so do you need Thank you. Okay, so let's see. So any XN is just two. Yeah, this is a trick question. Okay, wonderful. Now, I trained you a little bit. Okay, this is the first part, okay? Mm -hmm. If I train this one to one, all right? Mm -hmm. Then same question. Okay, so that I think you can't use those TG the square root of 2 plus 2 thing. So instead, I think the best approach would probably be um, going and writing it like, ooh, 10 doesn't have a lot of ink left, does it? Uh, do I have a pen? I don't. Do you have a nice pen? Yeah. Uh, it's better to go blackboard. We don't have blackboard here. Not here. Here. Oh, uh, okay. Uh, you have a oh, you have a, you have a writing pad. So, I mean, you can write this as um, the square root of 2 plus, wait, okay. So, you can write this as x2 is the square root of 3, x3 is the square root of 2 or plus the square root of 3, x4 is the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. Oh, so, kind of looks like... But at the end of the day, wouldn't it approach the same exact thing? It seems so anyway. So what happens if I square it? So x3 is just, of course, this. x4 squared is, of course, this. And then, I guess, you'd have to ask, I mean, what happens if you square x3 and x4 again, and you get, uh, by the binomial theorem, I guess 4 plus 3 plus 4 root 3. Oh, so that just gives you another, even more complicated root. And x4 to the fourth, I'm guessing, just does the same thing for you as well. So, how exactly would you approach this in a way that would break up the nested roots. Personally, oh, this is probably a squeeze theorem question, isn't it? I have to find a lower bound and an upper bound. So, the first thing to start with would probably be an upper bound. So, x1 is 1, xn plus 1 is the square root of 2 plus. Hey, wait, xn plus 1 squared is. Let me create a second series, yn, that's just xn squared. So then, oh, but then you're forced to do 2 plus the square root. Hmm. So then, how does this grow? Or does it diverge? Well, no, it can't diverge. It has to be less than 2. So let me think about this. X. Uh, so the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2 plus the square root of 2, etc. Um, eventually, plus the square root of 2 plus the square root, square root of 3. No, this would just approach 2, wouldn't it? Yeah, but I'm still debating that. Okay, let's say it's let's say it's less than two. Then um, on the square root of two plus this. Hey, wait a second! I think I just had an idea. If you just write an infinite string of this, like let's say n is equal to the square root of two plus the square root of 2, plus etc. plus the square root of 2, plus the square root of 3, and then just square it, this just gives you 2 plus n, which means that you're just solving a quadratic equation. Oh, that's so simple. I don't know why it didn't come to me earlier. So then um, I'm not going to go through the process of factoring this. So I'm just going to use the quadratic equation. 2 
And yeah, surprisingly, it looks like it approaches three over, no, not three over two. Can't be negative, which means you have to take the positive root, and it approaches two again, it says. Yeah, so it should just be one plus minus three over two. And obviously, can't be negative zero or negative one, so it has to be two, right? I mean, that's at least my thought process. Chris? <coughs> All right, thank you. <coughs> you must be father, right? Yeah, I'm his father.